fit, formidable, and fantastic. Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and welcome to a new episode. So I've been asked incessantly about oxalates since releasing my best vegan bodybuilding foods video about spinach, which I will link in the description below. So I felt this was an appropriate topic to explore in a video. Uh, one forward note though, and I want to emphasize this, I am not a doctor. All of the information that I'm providing in this video comes from my own research and the interpretations of that research, not any implied or actual medical training or any intention to officially diagnose or treat. So take it precisely for what it is, just me discussing the research on the topic. Uh, so what are oxalates? Oxalates are naturally occurring substances found in plants, animals, and in humans belonging to a group of molecules called organic acids. So key in there, they occur naturally in our own bodies and our bodies produce them. Uh, one method of production is cellular, cellular conversion of vitamin C to oxalates. So you really can't avoid them, uh, not if you're eating a nutritionally adequate and healthy diet. I just want you to keep that in mind. Some examples of foods that contain oxalates include various berries, leafy greens, nuts and seeds, legumes, grains, and fucking chocolate. I mean, fuck, that's like a laundry list of healthful foods. But should you really worry? Well, I guess that depends. Outside of a few rare health conditions, there appears to be no reason to restrict oxalates from your diet. And even in those rare cases, restriction is limited to 50 milligrams per day or about one quarter of a cup of raw spinach. The prime concern for most people with regards to oxalates appears to be kidney stone formation, at least from what I could find in my research. That being said, it should be noted that dietary oxalate consumption apparently accounts for only 10 to 15 percent of stone formation, which is relatively insignificant. So unless your healthcare practitioner has recommended oxalate restriction, it doesn't appear to be generally necessary. Perhaps talk to your doctor if you have any concerns, especially if you feel that you're at risk somehow. Nonetheless, there are some practical actions that you can take. The main one? Drink more fluids, upwards of 2.5 to 3 liters per day to increase urine volume. Interestingly, coffee and beer appear to reduce the risk of stones, whereas grapefruit juice increases the risk. So if you're like me and you avoid alcohol, perhaps enjoy some coffee each day along with ample water intake. Piss those fuckers out. Another action would be to ensure ample calcium intake, either through diet and or supplementation. If you supplement, at least 200 to 400 milligrams per day appears to be recommended, specifically from calcium citrate, since it increases urinary citrate excretion. And many vegan foods contain calcium, including many foods that also contain oxalates. Do pause this video now to take notes from the screen, rather than having me bore you with a regurgitation of what it says. So while you may be consuming oxalates from specific foods, you are also getting the nutritive tools you need to reduce stone risk at the same time. That's the beauty of whole foods. Um, and ensuring ample calcium intake, perhaps even supplementing a little extra each day, uh, maybe even from a good multivitamin, might be beneficial for another reason, especially for women. Since diets higher in oxalates may reduce calcium availability. On a similar note, turmeric consumption appears to lead to significantly higher urinary oxalate excretion. So perhaps consider adding some turmeric to your meals, which can give them a Southeast Asian kick. And as a huge fan of Indian dishes, that's kind of cool by me. Next, and this likely doesn't concern most of my viewers, but animal protein intake is linked with adverse effects on urinary chemistry, including lowering citrate excretion. If you recall my previous calcium suggestion, you will understand that you want to increase urinary citrate excretion, not reduce the rate. Uh, epidemiological data also shows that animal protein intake correlates well with the prevalence of stone formation. So, another pro tip, go vegan. Moving along, soaking and cooking foods appears to reduce their oxalate content via leaching out, so that's something simple to consider. And finally, data suggests that people who are obese or suffer from diabetes have a higher prevalence of stone formation. Thus, making proper lifestyle choices is also important. Granted, some people are born with a tendency to develop diabetes, but if you're not one of these folks, take care of yourself uh, to prevent a diet-induced onset. And that about covers it. Frankly, I'm not personally concerned about oxalates. Um, I will continue my consumption of beans, nuts, seeds, greens, and fruits, which are all major players in any healthful diet, not just a healthful vegan diet. 
I will also ensure that I continue to drink plenty to stay hydrated, and I also enjoy a few cups of coffee each day for the health benefits. But none of that is new for me. I also get plenty of dietary calcium. So I hope this has cleared shit up, because now when people ask, I will just link them to this video. Uh, do drop comments below and let me know what you think. Let's open some dialogue. As many of you have asked uh, for this kind of video uh, on this specific topic. Also, like and share this video so that it may help others. And please subscribe to my channel to stay on uh, top of twice-weekly updates. Otherwise, I will see you all around next time.